we've got a very special environment in New Zealand and we really do need to look after that. There's all sorts of things that we can do as, as custodians of the land. It's the most rewarding thing to walk through an Auckland park and say that you've planted all of those trees. We think New Zealand should lead the world in conservation because it's, it's our home. As Kiwis, we've always loved our great outdoors. We've done things like bring the black robin back from extinction. We've protected our unique cultural heritage and we've provided natural places for people to enjoy. But there is still more to do. The Department of Conservation needs your help. We're looking for people just like you to help protect what makes New Zealand great. Uh, we're here in the Bay of Islands and we've got a goal here and get these um, islands pest free. We've called the Project, Project Island Song. It involves a lot of um, local people, Department of Conservation, NRC, Whānau District Councils. We've all got a goal to make those islands pest free. It felt pretty good to knowing that you're going to be helping bring back the wildlife and all the, all the native birds and insects. Just working in your own whenua really, it's a real privilege. You don't have to get your hands dirty to make a difference. You can help out by doing bookkeeping, by perhaps taking control of a volunteer list for traps or for um, planting days or whatever. There are lots of ways you can help. What I wanted to do here was to have a sustainable farming operation that actually could improve the environment and that's why I've diversified into tourism. I think tourism and farming have got a lot of similarities in that they both rely on our clean, green, beautiful environment to sell its products. And I think tourism showcases that for New Zealand. So in fact, tourism is working for the agricultural sector, advertising our lamb, advertising our milk. And I think that's a little piece of the puzzle that a lot of farmers miss. We're just on the edge of suburban Dunedin, underneath the St. Clair Golf Course. And this is an extraordinary place on the cliffs here there's a colony of fairy pines. It's the only place in the world that uh, fairy pines are on the mainland. Well, this part of the project, actually getting the netting up, getting the fence just right, we're doing it all by volunteers. And I'm out here every weekend and we've got some people coming out during the week. I really thrive working with volunteers because they're so keen and they um, will do things that you can't pay people to do. I looked into the stream one day and I saw some fish that I weren't sure what they were. I talked with a man from Fish and Game and he identified them as the giant cockapoo. Well I think the special thing for me is that they're a fish that were here before the trout and the fact that they're a native. They need grass and they need plant life growing out on the edge of the water and if we let the cattle do their thing that just really reduces the amount of available grass for that. Well the fence has started two kilometres down that way back to another kilometre or so up behind me. So we've got a, quite a big area that we've fenced off with single wire fencing. DOC is a great partner for New Zealand because it enables us to cover off two of our, our key objectives. One, they enable us to, to make a contribution uh, to the environment through our conservation programs, uh, but they're also a big player in the tourism market and therefore they're, they're a logical partner for us. Uh, the main biodiversity projects we've got with DOC uh, across four of the country's Great Walks on each of uh, Rakiura, the Milford Track, the Rootburn Track and Lake Waikati Moana. So Maori New Zealand have uh, been a proud sponsor of Takahi Rescue. Over the years we've given uh, in excess of half a million dollars to DOC to do what's been a very important work on saving this bird from extinction. We've been able to really closely align our brand and our business uh, with the, the values of conservation in New Zealand. Project Janzoon is a, a privately funded ecological restoration of the Able Tasman National Park uh, with a 30 year time frame. So we're fortunate in this, in this operation that we've got uh, a number of partners. We've got the Birdsong Trust already established and doing some great work in the south part of the park. And, and that uh, involves the concession holders in the park as well. We have some collaborations already established with Victoria University, uh, with the local iwi. We just want to pull the best expertise from around the country. Nobody is sitting on the answer to the challenges that are here, um, but lots of people have useful contributions to make. Orokanui Eco Sanctuary is a project which is trying to restore this, this whole valley here above uh, uh, Waitati. It involves a fence that's almost nine kilometres long, uh, it's over 300 hectares. No one's really operated on this scale uh, in the South Island before. 
Well, I think conservation does involve everybody. I think Orokanui is one of those projects which expresses that community resolve and the community commitment. You see it in the 1,000 hours per month that volunteers give to this project. The Yellow-Eyed Penguin Trust was established in 1987. And it was the first single species charitable trust in New Zealand. Over the years, we've moved from a totally volunteer organisation to an organisation employing five full-time equivalent staff, but still assisted in so many ways by, by dozens and dozens of volunteers to enable us to achieve our conservation objectives. The Kaimai Catchments Project is a community integrated catchment management project. It was initiated by Department of Conservation, Waikato Regional Council and Bay of Plenty Regional Council with Ministry for the Environment funding. And they brought the Landcare Trust on board to facilitate and coordinate the project and bring the community into an engagement phase to address key land and water management issues. The value of bringing diverse community people together to share their stories and share their concerns. It's the only way forward and it's the most effective and the most fun way to achieve success in land and water management issues. At the end of the day as tangata whenua, the way in which our landscape is, the way in which our forests are, our birds are, they're a direct reflection on who we are as a people. And for Māori as tangata whenua, we take that responsibility seriously. So here we are in the Kai Territory Mountain Bike Park. Behind me we've got a fairly typical group of Sunday morning volunteers. We emphasise all the time that it's, it's a park for the community, it's their park. We want to get them away from that idea that they're just consumers of this local resource, but they're also contributors. Well, as a volunteer, I'm motivated by the chance to help the environment as much as possible. There's a lot of friendships to be made, I didn't used to do gardening in Japan, but I found it really, really healthy and fun. Nature Central is essentially a brand name for the Lower North Island um, Partnership, and that's a partnership between the three Lower North Island Regional Councils, Greater Wellington, Hawke's Bay and Horizons. Large parts of what DOC does, the Regional Council also does, just simply on different land. We're only a small country, we've got limited resources, so this just makes sense to get together and actually work more collaboratively. To me, conservation is really important because one day if I and when I have kids, I want them to be able to experience what I have. So I recently set up a blog all about marine sustainability. To other people my age and other people wanting to make a difference, it really could be as easy as just finding an issue that relates to you and signing a petition about it. You could write an email, you could volunteer. We are an enviro school, so we do want to pass on to kids that excitement for the natural world, where things come from, how things start, and planting and watching things grow and learning about plants and trees is all part of that. Whether you're the sort of person who likes to think big, or muck in and get your hands dirty, you can make a difference. So what are you waiting for? Let's get out there and make New Zealand the greatest living space on earth. You can make a difference! Get involved!